Welcome to our 10th tutorial in our series in beginning to develop games for the Game Boy in C. This time we're going to be looking at building on our last example where we started to build a game and building in some collision detection between sprites so that when our little bug actually hits our ship you can have your game over. It's going to be relatively straightforward but we're going to take you through step by step. Let's get started. So if you remember where we got to last time, we built this basic game where as I move the ship around, the bug will kind of follow us across the screen. But at the moment, it doesn't really work as a game because the bug can just go straight through me and there's no kind of consequence for that. So today we're going to look at sprite collisions and how you can use those. So it's really working out, is the bug touching the ship or vice versa, and then taking some action based upon that. So we're really going to start with the code we wrote last time. If you haven't looked at tutorial 9, go and have a look at that. This is the code for last time, and we're going to adapt this so we can actually check those collisions. But I'm actually going to show you one thing first. So last time we introduced you to something called structs. And we had a struct called game character, and then whenever we're referring to it in here, we have to do struct game character ship. I'm going to show you a kind of shortcut so we don't have to keep saying struct each time. We can just call it a game character, which is what it really is. So you go into your game character and type type def before the struct. Now when we go back into main we can literally just refer to it as a game character where we ever need to so we can get rid of struct. It cleans it up a bit, it's obviously for me it's more obvious because we're talking about a character which is a game character and you can see all the way through the rest is unchanged if we compile that it will just carry on working. So it doesn't really make any difference other than it just makes it nicer to work with. Okay so what we need to look at is in our while loop we need to find some way of checking whether a ship is colliding with a bug and we want to do that in a slightly generic way so that we could do it and reuse it for other things in future. But first let's talk about how we would actually detect whether one thing is overlapping the other and I'll just show you some screens and kind of talk you through that. So basic collision detection isn't too difficult, it just looks like it is until you break it down into bits. So really what we treat every sprite, or in this case meta sprite, we treat it as a rectangle. So this is the bug meta sprite from the game we built in the previous episode. And you can see the bug has a few things. It has an X and a Y coordinate in the top left hand corner. And then the ship, which is here you can see colliding with it, has an X and a Y coordinate in its top left hand corner. And then we also have a corner in the other part of the bug, which is where its bugs X and Y plus their width. So what we're really looking to check when we do collision detection is this red point here. So this red point here is the X and Y location of ship. And what we want to check is, is the X and Y location of ship between the X and Y location of bug and the width of bug added to that X and Y location. So basically, is that red dot anywhere within that blue rectangle? So the way we do that is turning it into actual code so what we're going to look at is the first bit we're going to check whether the ship x is greater than or equal than bug x so in that top left hand corner there bug x and that ship x is less than or equal to bug x plus width which is the other corner of the blue rectangle at the top there that's the first half of it so we're going to put those in brackets and then we're going to and and we're going to another bracket where we check that ship y is between bug y and bug y plus height. So you're basically just checking is the x and y coordinate, the red dot of ship, within that blue rectangle. That's the first half. If we only do that it will only collide sometimes. The second half is to flip that around. So now we have the ship underneath effectively and bug on top and we're trying to work out whether that red dot for bug is between ship x and ship y's kind of yellow rectangle there. So again it's code, we're going to say is the bug x greater than ship x and bug x is less than or equal to ship x plus width. So again it's that same part of the rectangle, is the red dot within the x coordinates of the rectangle for ship. Another and, and then is bug y between ship y and bug y between ship y plus ship height. So again it's just is that red dot within the yellow square. Now the reason we have to do both of them is in this situation where it's kind of within the ship part it wouldn't actually trigger collision. 
when you're in this part because the top left hand corner of bug is not within ship whereas here it is so you have to do both of these kind of pieces of code together to check whether either the top left hand corner of bug is within ship or the top left hand corner of ship is within bug and that will give you a full collision and you should be able to work out anywhere where the two are overlapping so now you understand how to detect that let's actually write some code for that so we're going to write a new method kind of write it near the top here and we're going to call that check collision and it needs to say whether yes it has collided or no it hasn't so it's going to return a type of a byte or u byte it's going to be zero or one uh, and we're going to call it check collision check collisions uh, and in that into that we're going to pass the two game characters we want to check so game character don't forget we need this passed in as a pointer so we're going to put this um, apostrophe at the end and we're going to call it one and then we're going to have a second parameter in our function called game character and two so into this we're passing game character one and game character two and we're going to do the same code that i wrote a moment ago on the kind of screen and we're going to write that in real code here so we'll kind of break it down uh, and show you how you're doing that so what we want to check is that one don't forget when you're a pointer we need to do this arrow 1.x is greater than or equal to 2.x and 1.x is less than or equal to 2x plus the width of 2 so okay that's the first part of our kind of uh, check. So we need to put that in brackets because that's half or a quarter of it done. So we're going to check that and now we're going to check the second one. So we're going to do and 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 it's very similar again but we're just going to check the y. So I'm actually just going to copy this make it quicker. So 1.y is greater than or equal to 2.y and 1.y is less than or equal to 2.y plus 2.height. Okay, that's one half of the collision. That checks whether the x and y coordinate for the top left hand corner of one is inside the rectangle of two. Now we've got to do the other half of that where we flip that around again. So I'm just literally gonna copy and paste this and flip it around. So we're just gonna check where we were checking one, we're gonna check two and vice versa. So two, one, two, two, one, you get the idea. Okay, so there we've got the two parts. The first one checks whether the top left hand corner of one is anywhere within the rectangle made by two, and the second one checks whether the left hand corner of two is in the rectangle created by one. So we need to bring those together, and we need to bring those together with an or. So this was checking x and y, this one is checking the other way as an or, and we're just going to return the Boolean value, the true or false that that returns. So return and put a semicolon at the end. And that's actually the code we need for checking collision. So we're gonna use that in our while loop down here. So the way we're gonna do that is to replace this one, while one basically means carry on forever. And in here, we're gonna use our check collisions. So I'm just gonna paste that check collision and we're gonna pass in one and two, which is the, the ship and our bug. So don't forget, it's a pointer again. We have to do ampersand, ampersand ship, ampersand bug. So don't forget that check collisions, if there is a collision, it's going to actually return um, one. If there isn't a collision, it's going to return zero. And we really want this to continue going round while there isn't a collision, so while it's zero. Whereas at the moment, that will just stop immediately because there won't be a collision. So we need to invert the result of check collision. So the way we do that is a character that's used in lots of programming languages where we just do this exclamation mark. And that basically says, if this returns true, make it false. If this returns false, make it true. So that's going to say, while there is not a collision, keep going around. So if we do that um, and actually compile that, you will see what happens. So you'll see the moment he hits, it just pauses. So this is where we want to do some kind of game over and maybe do some sound effects, but we're going to keep it relatively simple for now and do a game over. So effectively, as soon as it fails this, it's going to dump the code out to here so this is where we need to do something 
that basically says that the game's over. So we could do this in lots of different ways, um, but actually we're just going to do a really, really quick way of doing it. So what we're going to use is the printf command. It basically says it's going to print something to the screen. So we're going to do printf and you open up brackets and close the brackets there. And we're going to write uh, game over. So we're going to do some dashes in. Okay, so if we write that out now and have a look what it looks like and let our ship crash into our bug. There we are, we get game over written at the top there. And it's not really in the right position. We want it down a bit and centered a bit. So we have to kind of fiddle around to get that. So the way we're going to do that is using a special character, which means a new line, so slash n. We need to put a space after it, otherwise it won't actually do a new line between each one. So slash n, slash n, and we'll do five of these, I think. Should bring it down, and that will bring it down line by line. And let's see what that looks like now. Probably come down a little bit further. There you go. So this is a really rough way of doing this, um, but you can kind of see it's relatively straightforward. You would actually you could do your own screen, as we'll show potentially in future tutorials. But you can see if I dodge out of the way, I'm good. But the moment I slightly clip him, then we're over. And we can kind of try that edge detection if I'm just very close to him. I wasn't quite there, but I can be just about there and it's going to hit. But actually this screen shows a really good example. Because we're treating all the sprites as if they're a rectangle, to the user or the player, it doesn't actually look like these two are touching. Um, so because our collision isn't really taking into account exactly what the shape of the sprite is, it's potentially going to cause some problems. So you could try and write some very complicated and very slow code that exactly worked out whether it overlapped. But the easier thing to do, and a user really won't notice the difference, is rather than doing the collision on the whole width of the object, you just make it slightly smaller. So you just kind of check the middle here of each object. So you could see how you can adapt the code to that and just change the width uh, of it to be a little bit different and offset it slightly from the top left hand corner. And that would give you a kind of more accurate, even though you're still cheating, way of doing that collision. But hopefully that shows you the basics of collision of sprites. Hopefully in future we'll also look at collisions with backgrounds. But I hope you've enjoyed that. Let us know how you're getting on. And if you've got any questions, put them in the comments. But please don't forget to go and hit that subscribe and hit the like. Let's try and get this channel even more popular uh, than it is at the moment. Thanks for watching. See you next time.